good morning and um, well good afternoon if you're watching this in the afternoon. I want to say a special welcome to the members of our C Silver City CRC family that are tuning in today to watch this, to be a part of church as we're in lockdown. And also good morning to you if you're new here and you're watching the sermon from elsewhere around the world or even elsewhere in Broken Hill. We want to say good morning and we're so glad that you can join us digitally this morning or this afternoon or whenever it is that you're watching it. Just really want to encourage you to make sure that you're still spending some time in your week worshipping. Uh, it might be that you choose to do that before you watch the sermon. You can go on YouTube and, and find some songs that way, or you might have an old CD or an old DVD that you want to pop on and play and just really connect with the heart of God. Um, I am going to do communion as part of my sermon, so I encourage you, you can pause this video and go and get yourself something to take for communion. Um, even if it's just water and a piece of bread, that's fine. Whatever you have that's closest to the elements, what really matters is, is the heart behind it. So pause the video. Okay. All right. We're back. <laughs> so here we are again, back in lockdown. I'm back preaching to a camera. Uh, i said at, the, um, at some point during last year, I said I did not anticipate that 2020 would be the year I became a televangelist, but it does feel a little bit that way sometimes. I um, really want to encourage you to check out Pastor Wall's sermon from last week. He spoke on the sovereignty of God and it was so powerful. And it made me really step back and think about that, but also think about what God has been placing on my own heart. And even when Josh spoke a few weeks ago, that God seems to be really talking to us as a church family about his heart and his identity and his heart for us as his people, that he is sovereign and he wants to provide for us and, and be our father and be our friend. And it's amazing, um, amazing concept that the God of the universe wants to be that for us. And it's even more amazing to me that he's reaching out to really speak to us about that in this time. So I'm just going to start with prayer before we get into the sermon. So dear Lord, we just thank you that we are able to be here this morning, we're able to be here virtually um, and be together as your body. Lord, we thank you for the technology that enables that. And Lord God, I just pray as I speak this morning that you speak through me and we are able to deliver this message to the people. Lord God, I pray that it speaks to their heart and that it's helpful and useful and encouraging. Amen. Okay, so this morning I want to start by taking you through some of the feelings around lockdown that are not so nice and why it might be that we are feeling that way this morning or during this season of, of lockdown. You know, it, lockdown is very interesting. We came over here from South Australia in April and prior to this lockdown we hadn't experienced this kind of um, relentless ongoing lockdown. We'd had short, sharp, shiny ones that dealt with the problem and then we were kind of back to normal life. So for us it's been uh, quite an, an emotional journey and a mental thing getting our head around the fact that okay how long is this going to go for? So I want to talk about some of the feelings associated with that. So the first one I want to talk about is anxiety. Now I'm going to give you the dic dictionary definition for some of these feelings and we're going to go from there. So anxiety is a feeling of worry, nervousness or unease about something with an uncertain outcome. So I'm just going to read that again. A feeling of worry, nervousness or unease about something with an uncertain outcome. So when you read that, you think, oh my goodness, like, of course there's so much anxiety going on in society, in the world at the moment. Of course people are feeling anxious because we have all of these uncertain outcomes. We, you know, we watch the press conferences and Gladys Berejiklian and all these people and, and talking about vaccine numbers versus case numbers and whether we can see interstate family for Christmas and like it's just really uncertain and really quite anxiety inducing. The second feeling I want to talk about is frustrated. Now this is a big one for me, I easily go to frustration, I'm like oh, 2020 was enough, you know, and, and I remember at the end of 2020, we celebrated New Year's Eve and we were like, yay, it's over. This horrible year of pandemic is done. We don't, you know, and, and things are getting better and, and we'd got our case numbers down really low and we were able to go on holidays and we were able to see family and it was fantastic. Um, and then we moved here and, and that was fantastic. And then all of a sudden case numbers started rising and we went into lockdown and it was like we were kind of gaining momentum and it was like slamming the brakes on in the car. It was like, oh. Oh, I've been jolted. I don't. <laughs> everything's come to such a halt. And so there's this feeling of frustration. 
And, and the dictionary definition of frustration is feeling or expressing distress and annoyance resulting from an inability to change or achieve something. Wow. That certainly sums up lockdown to me. You know, this feeling of annoyance and, and, and frustration because of this inability to change or achieve something. And that doesn't mean that we're not achieving anything. Like, I'm still doing my studies. I'm here this morning recording a sermon. We're still here. But... It just feels like everything's come to a little bit of a halt, and that can be really frustrating. And the last one I want to talk about, which I think can, is so, uh, prevail, pre, so powerful and so impactful in our society today that people seem to be clinging onto, and that is fear. So fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the threat of danger, pain, or harm. And so we feel like we're un we're in danger all the time, either danger of lockdowns. You know, I realised at one point I was more scared of a lockdown than I probably was of COVID because at that time we had no COVID cases here. I wasn't worried about getting the disease. I was just worried about my life coming to a halt. And so we begin to fear and it almost feels like this cloud of, of COVID fog comes over us and we're just like, oh, you know, is it safe to go to the shops? Is it safe to do anything? Is, uh, you know, are we going to be in lockdown forever? Are children going to get it? Uh, when can kids go back to school? You know, all these questions and all this fear starts to almost bubble up in us and across society. So at this point, you're probably thinking, okay, I, I, hopefully you feel like maybe you've experienced some of these feelings and, it, and it's nice to hear someone talk about it. But also, this is a sermon, Pastor Jesse. Are we not supposed to be encouraged? <laughs> Are we not supposed to talk about God's perspective? Well, don't worry. We're going to go there now. So I've actually written the word however, um, and that's in, in nice, big, bold writing, and I've even highlighted it. However, and I like however. It's like a nicer word for but. Anyways, but however... I do really want to encourage you this morning, and it's not all doom and gloom. So we're going to have a bit of a look at Psalm 13. So this is a Psalm of David, and it says, How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord, my God, give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say, I have overcome him. And my foes will rejoice when I fall. But, or you could use the word however, but I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation and I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. I'm going to read those last couple of verses again. But I will trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation and I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. So this morning I want to talk about when we have these emotions, when we have these feelings come over us, how do we then take them to God? And, and there's this godly exchange that happens because God didn't actually, the Spirit of God does not want us to live in fear. And I want to look at another passage of Scripture. So we're going to look at 2 Timothy, and this is verse, um, 2 Timothy 1, verses 6 and 7. It says, for God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear, but he has given us a spirit of power, of love, of sound judgment and personal dis discipline. Abilities that result in calm, well-balanced, in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. You know, this verse is just so high on my tool belt and I think it speaks the importance of mes memorising scripture. And I've used it over the years to speak it over loved ones who are struggling with mental health. Um, I've used it over myself in the grips of fear, and I speak it over my children. It says in the King James Version, you know, of um, peace, love, and a sound mind. You know, and so God has not given me a spirit of fear. He's given me a spirit of a sound mind. As I was preparing for this morning, I came across a quote from a, a course that me and Josh did a couple of years ago. And it says, practice the pause. It says, when in doubt, pause. When angry, pause. When tired, pause. When stressed, pause. And when you pause, pray. And as I read that, I thought about how Pastor Wall spoke a couple of weeks ago. Um, and he was talking about baptism in the spirit and checking in with the spirit man. 
constantly checking in with the Holy Spirit because God, when we come to Christ and when we're born again, we're made as a new creation. We have the Holy Spirit living in us. So it's that constant checking in with the Holy Spirit. Um, as Paul wrote those, so the, the passage I read just before was Paul writing to Timothy and he was kind of passing on the baton of his ministry. And during that time, he was in prison preparing to die. More than likely they were going to execute him. And you just think, wow, like if anybody was in a position to write that psalm like David had, it was Paul to be lamenting. But he wasn't lamenting because he was filled with the spirit of Christ and he was trying to pass on that baton to Timothy. And he was saying, you don't have a spirit of fear. You have a spirit of, of peace, love and a sound mind. And we can experience fear. Things can be fearful. You know, even if a wild animal jumps out in front of you, that's part of survival tactics is to feel fear fearful. But there's a difference between feeling fear and living under a spirit of fear. And I can tell you which one I would rather. I can experience fear, but I can also take that fear to Christ and be reminded that he has given me a sound mind. He has filled me with his peace and his love. And there's this wonderful godly exchange that happens there. So this morning, as, we, um, as I kind of wrap things up, I'm going to actually do communion. And I think this is a really powerful thing. Uh, I love doing communion together as a church family when we're all here in person on a Sunday. But I also think it's a powerful thing to just do by yourself or with your family. Um, I love it when you go to a wedding and they take communion as part of the wedding, um, as part of those marriage vows, because I just think it's such an important thing. And I've been speaking about this, I guess, exchange that happens when we go to God with our feelings and then he gives us, you know, he reminds us of the spirit in us that is of peace, of love, of a sound mind, all of those things. And this morning, I just want us to really remember that that happened because of the amazing sacrifice that was made. You know, because Jesus died on the cross and, and took back the keys from the enemy and, and rose again, we are able to live in this amazing um, experience of him and his Holy Spirit every day. So we're just going to come around communion now. Um, hopefully you paused your video at the start and got your elements ready, so I'm just going to pray. Lord, I thank you for your body that was broken. Lord, I thank you that this sacrifice was one that you willingly did so that each and every one of us could be in relationship with you. And Lord God, we would not have to live under fear. We would not have to live under anxiety. We would not have to live under frustration. But Lord God, you came and you rose again so that we could have the Holy Spirit. We could have you and we could be in relationship with you, Lord God. Lord, we thank you that that sacrifice brought our salvation and our freedom. Lord, we just thank you this morning for your body that was broken. You can take and eat. And Lord God, I just thank you this morning for your blood. Blood is such a personal thing, Lord God, and you, as this, you poured your blood out for every single one of us, God, to wash us clean, to wash away our sins and to bring us back into that right relationship with you so that we could be filled with the Holy Spirit, so that we could be your people on earth. Lord God, we thank you that, that you poured out that sacrifice so we can just take and drink. Amen. So I put this together and then I did something uh, as just a bit of an exercise to connect with God. And I actually wrote my own psalm. And you may have done this before. It may be a new thing to you. You can, you can read through the psalms. And they're just this beautiful poetry of people, pour, of, of mostly David, pouring his heart out to God and then receiving and, and realising his identity as a, as a child of God. And so we saw that in the one we read earlier. So I'm going to read you mine. And it says, God, I thought we would be done by now. How long must we sit in solitude? How long must I homeschool my children? My patience is weary and so are my eyes. How long must we live in this cloud of fear? But you, God, are sovereign. You, God, keep my mind sound. Filling me with your peace and your love, and I will continue to trust in your faithfulness all of the days of my life. So I found this to be quite a powerful exercise to say, look, 
oh, Jesus, this is how I'm feeling. But actually, I know that you've given me a sound mind. And it's been so, uh, it's been a, a tumultuous, I guess, couple of weeks being in lockdown and not knowing how long that would go for and, and doing the home learning with the children. And, you know, some days I've been fantastic and other days I've been a bit, ugh. Like, really, are we still here? And that's okay, that's a normal human response. But what I really want you to take from this sermon this morning is we need to learn that as the people of God, that we need to give those feelings to God and participate in this holy exchange because he's actually given us that, that spirit of, of peace, of love, of a sound mind, of all of those things that we spoke about earlier. So this week, I really want to encourage you to have some, I've given, give you some homework, um, which is to go away and write your own psalm. And if you'd like to, you're more than welcome to, to send it to me or to send it to Pastor Wall or to Pastor Joy and just to get some feedback or just for the, the connection of sharing it with somebody. Um, if you feel really brave, we now have a church Facebook page. So um, if you're techie, you can go along and follow us on that. And if you're really brave, you're welcome to share it there or send it to me and ask to have it shared there. Um, it's just a way that we can, can connect not only with God, but with each other during this season because we're still here. And we can't physically meet together, but we're all of us here at the church. We're just a phone call away and we're more than happy to have a chat. Um, anything that we can practically assist with within the legal boundaries, we're more than welcome to do that um, and more than happy to do that for you. So um, God bless you this morning. And I just really, uh, if you need to reach out to us, please do. Don't hesitate to do that. And we really look forward to connecting with you next week, either virtually or um, and then hopefully soon we'll be connecting together in person. And lastly, if you're watching this and you haven't been to church before, or maybe it's been a long time since you've been to church or anything like that, and you're thinking, man, I really connect to that. I really feel all those emotions, but I don't understand what she's talking about in this being filled with the Spirit of God and, and being able to go to God with these things. I really encourage you to reach out. You can reach out through our YouTube, through our Facebook um, you can, you can give us a call and we're more than happy to have a chat with you about those things and just connect with you about how you can experience that freedom in Christ. So we'll see you again next week, more than likely virtually, and then hopefully we'll be meeting together in person again soon. See you later.